right, could I ask everybody to stand, please, as we have a procession? All right, thank you, everybody. You may be seated. <clears throat> Wonderful to see our little Jarjams walk through and also our secondary students joining us today as well. And you're going to see a little bit from everybody. Well, first of all, I want to welcome everybody today. My name is John Ralph. I'm the head of Gawara School, and we're very proud to have you all in our cathedral. It's lovely to have us back in person again as well. Uh, last year's event was held online and as lovely as that was, it does not beat being in person with each other. And so, uh, welcome and thank you for coming this morning. Also like to mention that this is being live streamed as we speak on Facebook uh, and I have to, it would be remiss of me not to give my usual shout out to Auntie Kerry who is... Um, to Kayla and Xavier's auntie, who is watching as we speak all the way out at Narromine in Western New South Wales, and to all the other families uh, watching this from on country, we welcome you aboard this morning. So, um, I'd just like to officially uh, welcome several people today. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, our, our Archbishop of Sydney, Kanishka Rafael, who will come and speak to us in just a moment. Uh, I'd like to welcome Dr. Collier, uh, Head of School. I'd like to welcome uh, Rhonda Robson, our Deputy Head of Primary and Director of Primary Ed. I'd like to welcome Auntie Sharon. We keep referring back to Auntie Sharon as one of the founders of our school. <laughs> Karen, you're a shocker. <laughs> you know where you are. Um, without Auntie Sharon and Pastor Ray's vision uh, all those years ago, we would not be here this morning. And so we truly honour Pastor Ray and Aunty Sharon for everything that they have done. 
I'd like to welcome the Chairman of St Andrews Cathedral Gora Schools Foundation, Mr Peter Warren, and other, other members who are present here today, to all of our donors and volunteers and supporters who helped Gora and have made Gora the school it is today. It is your, your role is vitally important. I don't want you to ever underestimate what you do and contribute to our school. Everybody watching the live stream, especially Gora families from on country, and St. Mark's in Dremoyne, who are also watching this uh, from their school. We do have apologies this morning from Pastor Ray Minikin, from several, also from several parliamentarians, Senator Patrick Dodson, Shadow Assistant Minister for Reconciliation, Shadow Assistant Minister for Constitutional Recognition of Indigenous Australians, Tanya Plibersek, our local member for Sydney, who did visit Gawara earlier this year and was actually very, very impressed with what we are doing here. Mrs Linda Burney, Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australia, who sends her best wishes to all the students, teachers and participants. And uh, you're about to uh, see a wonderful play in a moment and we must give a special thank you to um, Grace and Charmaine, who did so much work on the costumes, and to all those people who came in two Saturdays ago and helped put those costumes together. Uh, it's quite a list of welcomes, but I will now invite um, a very reverend Archbishop of Sydney, Reverend Kanishka Rafael, to come to welcome us all here today. Thank you. Oh, yes, and before we do that, Reverend Kanishka, Kylan, I'll get you to come up here and to do our acknowledgement of country, please. Can I ask all the boys and girls to stand and uh, you know what to do with Kylan? Please, please join me in saying the acknowledgement of country. We would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Aura Nation and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Thank you for caring for the land. We promise to look after it, the animals, people, waterways and oceans. Hello land, hello sky, hello friends, hello me. We ask Creator God, could this land and all the people who live here too. Thank you, Mr. Ralph, and thank you, Carlin, for leading us in the acknowledgement. My name is Kanishka Rafal. And uh, it's a very great joy to be able to welcome you to the 2021 Gawara NADOC Assembly. Um, in my former role, I was the chair of uh, the Cathedral and Gawara School Councils. Um, and uh, I'm delighted to say that in my new role, I remain the president of the councils. And so I feel very welcome here. And I'm very grateful to Mr. Ralph for the invitation just to welcome you this morning. Uh, we meet in our cathedral, which we love and which is a place for us to gather together. But we are always conscious and glad to remember that this cathedral stands on Gadigal land. And we uh, gladly acknowledge and respectfully acknowledge uh, the elders of the Gadigal people, past and present and emerging. <coughs> and we welcome this morning uh, Indigenous elders and Indigenous people especially our Gawara community. As we uh, celebrate NADOC this year, we do so um, with much gratefulness, uh, thankfulness uh, and gladness to uh, acknowledge that Gawara was recognised as School of the Year uh, last year, a tremendous, tremendous achievement uh, and uh, one which um, Mr Ralph has already mentioned the crucial role of Pastor Ray and Auntie Sharon. And so it's wonderful to have Auntie Sharon here this morning, uh, as she is always amongst us, uh, helping and supporting and guiding and directing. And we're so grateful for that. So boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of school council and the foundation, uh, Gawara school, Gawara faculty, Gawara community. Uh, welcome to our NADOC assembly. We're so glad that you're here to share in this wonderful and special and important occasion. Welcome.
The acknowledgement of country that you saw today was something new that we've started this year, something we're very proud of in that previous years. We've had one student do the acknowledgement of country every day, but this year we have over 430 students say the acknowledgement of country every day. And that's a, a wonderful addition that we're doing. All right, we're going to move to our first item. So I'm going to introduce to you a performance by our Gawara students led by Uncle Matthew Doyle. Uh, Uncle Matt is a descendant of the Marari people from the Lightning Ridge area of New South Wales and grew up in the southern Sydney area on Darawal land. Uncle Matt has been a significant um, professional musician, composer and dancer and he was also one that led our students out onto the um, uh, ANZ Stadium a little while ago during reconciliation, during reconciliation week as we danced at the Rabbitohs and Eels game. I'll pass now over to Uncle Matt. Thank you, Mr. Al. Good morning. Uh, I've been lucky enough to um, be teaching and sharing culture and particularly dances with uh, the students and with your, your children uh, this term. Um, it's uh, eight, eight o'clock every morning. They start with a warm up and um, they've been learning a couple of dances, uh, my dances. Uh, the uh, dance we're performing today are a welcome dance to one acknowledge country, uh, but to also welcome you here to uh, this very special uh, assembly. And the second dance is about um, preparing the ochre paint that you see uh, they're wearing on their faces, uh, which is a, a pretty special activity in itself in preparing ochre and then applying it to our bodies to show who we are, represent our families and our, our nation or our, our mob, if you like. So um, they're the two dances we're going to do. So hope you enjoy it. Mala mi gajuya bangawara, 
Kawamele, kawamele, karanci pala. Mala mega jewe bangga wara, mala mega jewe bangga wara. Kapwa mele, kapwa mele, mala mega jewe bangga wara. Kapwa mele, kapwa mele, karanci pala. Ae, ae, ae. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Uncle Matt. I know this mum will not like me saying this, but I want to give a special thank you to Alicia, who is sitting down the back today. We put a call out during our, one of our GPAC meetings uh, where a suggestion was made about our students learning more Aboriginal dance. And we said, does anybody have a connection? And Alicia put us in touch with Uncle Matt, and it's been fantastic connections. Thank you very much, Alicia. All right, we have a guest speaker today. Um, Jonathan Jones is going to come and speak to us about On Country. Uh, Jonathan is a member of the Wiradjuri and Kamilaroi peoples of South East Australia. I first met Jonathan about three years ago at an AIS um, Aboriginal State Conference here in Sydney, and I was blown away by his artwork and by his knowledge. And so I'm going to ask Jonathan if you're able to come and join us, please. Yerudumarang Mujigalang, you went to Jonathan Jones, Baladu, Rajari Bull, Gamilaroi Bull, Gibi Bull, Natu Yina, Yinjamala, Mayangalang Gu, Nurumbang Gu, Eora Bull, Garigu Bull, Mandang Gu. I'd also like to acknowledge everyone here today and also thank you for, um, for the opportunity to speak. Um, as you all know, um, this year's theme for NAIDOC Week is Healing Country. Um, but when I speak to elders like um, my uncle Stan Grant, he would not say healing country, he would probably say nanani nin norambang win dorodo, which is um, country needs fire. Um, we need fire to look after our country and to heal our country. Um, and fire is a really important part of, of how we look after our, our place. It's a, it's a really important part of how we relate to other nations, how we relate to each other, and how we take care of community. Um, in this next slide, you'll see that um, even in the very early days when First Fleet arrived, um, they would often comment how beautiful the country was. They would talk about um, how, how the, the country was covered in beautiful green grass pastures, that the trees were burnt, um, but there were you know, large park-like estates. The one thing all of those early explorers kept saying was um, Australia had a park-like estate. Um, in this next slide, you'll see that sometimes they, some, some early explorers understood that fire was used to clear out the bush in a way to make hunting possible, so people could um, hunt kangaroos and hunt emu. But in fact, looking after country with fire was much more complex than that. Um, and in this next slide, you'll see this is out at Bathurst, um, where people talk about the Bathurst Plains and these beautiful rolling hills of green, of green grass. And this fire, the, the way that fire was used right across the country was obviously to look after country, to burn it back, but that ensured that we had these big green pastures. So trees weren't able to grow in big patches, um, but grass was able to constantly renew itself every year and create what um, those first explorers thought was some of the most beautiful country that they had ever seen. But of course, what does that mean? What does fire do to grass and why would people be wanting to, to, um, to burn country and, and, and clear it off to, to promote grass? 
Um, in this next slide, you'll see kangaroo grass, which is one of the most dominant species of grass for across Australia. But people, of course, would collect this grass and harvest this grass to make, um, to, to make flour. And then when people start making flour, they start making bread and start looking after their families. Um, in this next slide, this is a bit of a cheeky slide to show you, but this is in fact um, one of the earliest grindstones found in central New South Wales. So this is a grindstone. This is a stone that people would, after they'd collected that grass, they'd put it on this stone and they'd grind it up, and that would make the flour. Now this grindstone here is 30, it's, it's understood to be 32,000 years old. So this is one of the oldest bread-making tools in the world, um, and it came from central New South Wales. So it's a really important piece of telling Australia's story and how Aboriginal Australians, um, you know, as Uncle Bruce Pascoe talks about, were some of the very first agricultural people in, in the world. Um, you'll see here too that there's some, oh, sorry, yeah, in this next, um, oh no, we'll jump to the next slide. Um, in this next slide, you'll see that when, I, when we talk about fire and how we apply fire to country, it's not um, a random bushfire. Applying fire to country is about knowing country. It's about working with country and working with the environment. Um, it's about slowly putting fire. It's about what people often call cool burns, so that happen in cool in the winter, when there's a lot of moisture in the ground, and people slowly walking through country, applying fire in patches. And those patches then sort of burn down and in controlled ways. In this next slide, you'll see that fire doesn't roar through country. Fire's not our enemy. Um, fire is often talked about as um, running through country like the same way that water runs through country. Um, and it just trickles along the ground, cleaning, that, cleaning the environment. In this next slide, you'll see how cool those fires are. So you can see that that fire's just gone through, and you can see that straight after that fire's gone through, you walk on country and you start looking at country and working out what happened, what burned, what needed to be burnt next year, um, and, and, and really studying and getting to know your country. So this process of cool burns, looking after our environment, is something that's been going on for thousands of generations. But of course, um, in the last 250 years, that's been broken. That relationship we have to fire um, has been changed, and we've started to see these devastating bushfires that we've been experiencing, from that extraordinary fuel load that starts to build up in country. Um, as many of you can imagine, you know, you think about the, like a national park, um, a national park is a place that's usually been locked off. Um, no one's allowed to do anything in there. You would never describe a national park as a park-like estate, you know, a, of beautiful meadows with trees. So you can see that in 200 years, our environment's completely shifted. So we really need to encourage um, Aboriginal communities to get back on country. As a nation, we need to support Aboriginal communities to return to country to look after our land, um, and in particular in the southeast here in New South Wales, Victoria, encouraging communities to get back on their, on their lands um, despite borders, despite fences, despite different land titles. Um, we need to get back on our country and start looking after it with fire. And that's a process that I think all of us need to be encouraging. Um, so I'll leave you with that idea um, and the idea that we need to support our communities to look after our environment um, and use fire. So, nanani nin win dorodo. We need to care for our country with fire. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, many people have heard me speak around the fact that Indigenous people did not survive 80,000 years in Australia by luck or chance, that everything had a system to it, everything had a purpose to it. And that grindstone that Jonathan just showed you was an exact example of that, that the, we were bakers, that it was not um, just random acts that happened. These were purposeful and deliberate. Thanks very much, Jonathan, for coming today. I really appreciate you being at our school. All right, our next item this morning is a presentation from our Stage 3 First Nations students.
CSC and FNADOC is your country, heal our nation. These important words mean for our nation to come together to not only celebrate First Nation cultures, but to do better by country, to protect it, respect it in all its forms. There is, for, there is opportunity for collaboration change, which can help us move forward together. Through doing this, we can heal our country, heal our nation, and build better relationships with all Australians. In the Yuen Nation on the south coast of New South Wales, the forest is being flooded and all the animals are dying. To heal country, we can plant more food and trees to keep the animals alive. In the Piliga in Narrabri, the Gamilaroi Nation, a mining company is trying to run gas pipes through this sacred land. This is destroying the land we need to protect. To help heal country, we can make sure this will not happen again and plant more plants and trees. In Guru Nation, floods are killing animals and people. We can heal our country by helping everyone with their houses and we can build more houses. In Dukan Gorge, in Jerkan country in Western Australia, Rio Into blew up Dukan Gorge and our sacred land is now destroyed. We can plant more plants and look after our sacred country to heal country. We can also never let it happen again. In Murray Dolan Basin that goes from Wiradjuri Nation to the Narindjuri Nation, the rivers have been polluted and destroyed. It has green blue algal blooms in the water that are dangerous for people if they touch it. We can heal country by taking care of the Murray Dolan Basin and clean up the mess that what the stormwater makes. In Gamangir in, in far north New South Wales, people are not picking up after themselves and the litter washes ashore. We can take action by picking up three pieces of rubbish every time you leave the beach. We have just heard of some examples of country that have been mistreated and desperately need protection. We need to protect sites of cultural importance or we could lose them forever. So if we heal country, we can heal our nation. Thank you, Stage 3 students. We're now going to see an item from our secondary students, and I'm going to pass over to our Aboriginal education mentor, Matt Hammond. Thank you, Matt. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, I get to step back a bit this year because I, I have a bit more uh, student uh, interest in presenting. Uh, so I'll step aside for Josh Morgan, who's going to talk about, well, I'll let him tell you. Every year there's a national competition to decide the post of FNADOC that visually shows the that visually shows the theme for that year. This year's theme was Hill Country and the winner was Maggie Jean Douglas. Maggie Jean is a goodbye goodbye artist from South East Queensland. She is 21 years old. Her entry, Care to Country, was chosen from 260 entries in the national competition, including communities, people, animals and bush medication spread over different landscapes of red dirt, green grass, bushlands and coastal areas. She has been recorded saying creating care for country I keep in mind that it means spiritually, physically, emotionally, socially, and culturally. Also, I chose to create a bright and vibrant artwork that included the different colors of, that, of the land, but shows how they come together in our beautiful country and to make people feel hopeful for the future. Now, can we please go to the next slide where I'll talk about the three featured posters. The, f the three featured posters from past years from left to right, we have the very first recorded NAIDOC poster from 1972 with the theme Advanced Australia Rare, relating to the NAIDOC theme, anthem. In the middle, Voice Treaty Truth from 2019, relating to the Uluru Statement from the Heart, which is a movement that is, amongst other things, aiming for constitutional voices for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander and Australia's parliament. On the on the right, the poster from 2020, in which the theme was always was, always will be. This relates both the ancient history of ongoing connections that Indigenous people have to this country.
Uh, thanks, Josh. Uh, now we have uh, Sunny coming up, followed by Alex. When coming up with a design for the poster, we decided to include a few symbolic details. This group considered, uh, consisted of most of the indigenous students in the high school, all contributing to the discussion with myself and Alex producing this poster from this, from this discussion. The symbol behind the Australia is a river because water is symbolic of life. We are currently in drought and it affects all of our communities. The rivers, the rivers are veins of Mother Earth. We need water to heal country and keep her alive. The kangaroo tracks in the middle right of the poster symbolize the life that surrounds the waterways and travels, and travels in the direction of life. In the top left hand corner, of the poster, there are four people gathered around us in a circle. This represents the families and communities that are dependent on the life of country, as well as look as well as look after country to contribute to the life cycle, or to the life of to the cycle of life. With the Australia in the middle of the page, we have chosen to make it with the Aboriginal inside that shows the ongoing relationship of Aboriginal people and our connection to the country. Within thousands of years of knowledge and traditions are the keys to keeping the country alive and safe. When we were brainstorming ideas for the poster, we thought it would be important to have the Torres Strait Islanders flag in the background because the Torres Strait Islanders contribute greatly to our stories of country and responsibilities to country. Thank you all of our secondary students for contributing that today. Um, I'd like to next invite uh, Mrs Lavinia Williams to the stage. Uh, this year we were able to um, be able to create uh, a very well deserved executive position within our Gawara School and this year Lavinia is our K-12 educational, Aboriginal educational consultant and very well deserved, and I'll pass over to Lavinia to introduce the creation story of the Narran Lakes. Isaac, can we please bring to screen the picture of my parents? Yamangaya Lavinia Williams Gu. I'm a direct descendant of the Uallarai people, people of Dinawanda Emu, people of Black Soil Country. The Uallarai Nation, as pictured on the slide, in the shaded area on the screen is home of the Bakara River, part of the Mooney River and part of the Narran River. Within the boundaries of our country also lays the Narran and Cookeran Lakes, which are landmarks of significant dreaming stories that belong to our people. The cultural content presented in the following dreaming story remains the cultural intellectual property of the sovereign Uallarai people of the Gamilaroi Nation. As customary to cultural responsibility and traditional law, we have sought permissions from my family elders, my mother, Melinda, also known as Aunty Mindy, uh, is in the top, she's placing dinner one feathers on my head, and my father, Wayne, who's in the background of the bottom picture. Mum is an elder and a direct descendant of the Rallarai people. She's originally from Walgut, but has lived in Gadooga for 44 years. She currently teaches at Gadooga Central School and has been in education for more than 35 years. My mum speaks Shualarai and Gamilarai language and is the resource teacher for our local school at Gaduga. Mum is a respected knowledge holder of the Gaduga community and a, mem a member of the Yualarai language group, local AECG and other community organisations that support youth and the development of our community. My dad, Wayne, is a Kuma man and Yualarai Yaliai descendant. He's lived in Gaduga all of his life. He's a retired shearer of 50 years my dad currently owns a water trucking business, stealing outback roads and mines for opal as a hobby. Dad is the eldest of his line and the patriarch of the Bishop Gibbs family. And unknowingly to him, he passes down the law of, of the land to our children. 
It's our duty to ensure the cultural processes and cultural authenticity is upheld and maintained for future generations to come. So on behalf of St Andrews Cathedral and Gawara Schools, I'd like to extend a big thank you to Mum and Dad and our community for allowing us to share this story with you all. This dreaming story is a generic version and detailed versions can only be told with their explicit teachings, teachings from elders from the community. Before the play begins, I just want to say a big thank you to Uncle Billy McPherson. Uncle Billy is a Gamilaroi man from Queensland. His work in the performing arts began as a child actor in the 1980s with Streets and Arts Community Theatre Company in Brisbane. He's been in uh, the acting industry for many, many years and Uncle Billy was kind enough to um, use his voice to record our dreaming story. So it's my absolute honour to present to you the creation of the Narran Lake. In the time of the dreaming, during God's creation, not far from Lightning Ridge and Anguldoo, there was a beautiful spring called Gurugul. Bayami and his two wives, Garambili and Baringulu, lived at this spring. One day, Bayami said to his wives, you two go out to collect frogs and yams, while I'll go out for honey and to hunt kangaroo and emu. Then meet me back at Gurugul Spring, where the water is sweet and clear. The wives took their yam sticks and did as Bayami told them. They traveled far and dug out many yams and collected many frogs. They were tired when they returned to Gurugul. When they saw the cool, fresh water, they longed to go swimming. As the women swam and played in the water, they didn't notice two big gadiars creeping up behind them. The two big gadiars pounced on the women and swallowed them up. With their tummies full, the gadiars continued along the Naran River. As they swam, they captured all the water too. While Bayami was out hunting in the bush, he had a feeling that something was wrong. He went back to the camp where he had left the two women. He found their gumilas, but there was no sign of the women and there was no water left in the spring. He realized that the gadiars had taken his two wives. Bayami stopped and thought, the gadiars are one step ahead of me. If I follow this windy river around, I won't be able to catch them. I need to be smarter and get one step ahead of them. Instead of following the river, I'll cut across the bends in the river. And so he did. Bayami soon reached the place where the underground channel of the Gurugil joins the Naran River. There he saw what he had never seen before, a deep, dry hole. My army said the Gadigas had emptied all the water holes and taken all the water with them. I know this river well. I will cut across from one big dry hole to another to get ahead of them. Bayami moved quickly, making shortcuts between the big holes. His track is still marked by the Marilla ridges that stretch down the Naran River, pointing in towards the deep holes. Every hole that Bayami came to was dry, until he finally reached the end of the Naran River. The hole here was still quite wet and muddy, so he knew he was very close to the Gadias. Then he saw them. A big fight took place between Bayami and the Gadias. 
By Emmy hurl one spear after another and wounded both gutters. They lashed their tails furiously, making great hollows in the ground. The water they had brought with them quickly filled these holes. When Bayami freed the two women from the stomachs of the gutters, they weren't moving. So Bayami laid them down on a big ant's nest. The healing of the ants got the women twitching and they came back to life. For a moment, the two women stood with the dazed expression on their faces. Then they clung together, shaking. Bayami captured the gutters to make sure they'd never return again. Ever since this time, when there has been flooding, the Naran River has flowed into the hollows made by the gutters when they thrashed their tails about. Bayemi warned his wives to never swim in the deep holes of the Naran River again, as it wasn't safe. Instead, he told them to swim in the water at Begeda. Bayami said, soon the black swans the pelicans and the ducks will find their way here. The land was once dry, but in the future, there will be water and waterfowl. From this time on, the Naran River will run into this hole and the water will make a new big lake. What Bayami said came true. Now the Naran Lake shows a large stretch of water that spread for miles and has become home to thousands of wild birds. God made us mob to look after country and protect it, the land, plants and animals. These stories are part of the Creator's plan and teaching and have been kept alive by First Nation peoples. Today, we are grateful to share with you the creation of one of the most Beautiful places. The Naran River. Uh, boys and girls, just stay, just stay. Boys and girls, come back, come back, come back, come back. Boys and girls, come back very quickly. I know we've got a timetable, but. I think us mob really need to be really proud of this. Um, I think I want to just acknowledge a couple of people here. Uh, Lavinia's done an amazing job putting all this together, but we also need to give a special thank you to our Aboriginal Education Assistant, Lauren Ferguson, who actually put all of this together herself. And so can I ask us all once again to applaud this great team? Lauren. Lauren, stand up. Thank you. Yes, there you go. <laughs> All right, now, boys and girls, you may go back. Thank you very much. So it's, it's a wonderful team effort that we have existing in our school. Okay, we're now going to pass over to our head of school, Dr. John Collier, if you'd like to make some comments. Thank you, Dr. Collier. Well, good morning. I'd like to add my welcome to those already given and to especially say welcome to our Aboriginal parents and caregivers who are with us this morning. It's lovely to have you here. Welcome also to our chairman, shall I say our new chairman, Mr Ray Jarrett. And I'd like particularly to say welcome to the members of our foundation. Our foundation are those people with financial expertise who actually do the work to make sure that there's a good supply of money to run our programs. While we'd like to think we don't need money, uh, all the adults and most of the children realise that that's not the case and there needs to be good cash flow. So although this will embarrass them because they don't seek the limelight, I would like to uh, identified to you, Mr. Peter Warren, the chair of our foundation and all the members of our foundation who are here present, 
Would you please stand for a moment so that everyone can see who you are? All members of the foundation, yes, thank you for your wonderful work. In terms of the necessity for money, I did point out to the State Minister for Education we needed more funding to make Aboriginal education vibrant. And she replied to me by sending me a form letter telling me what a wonderful job the government is doing in education. And so we really rely more than ever uh, on the goodwill and the financial uh, benefaction um, of our foundation and our supporters. And in the light of that, we actually have some of our donors present today. Again, they avoid the limelight, they give humbly and willingly, but I'd like you to see that they are here. So our major sponsors from foundations and trusts and philanthropic giving, might I just ask you to stand for a moment, please? Yes, I'm going to embarrass you, but please just stand for a moment. Mr. Ralph and Mrs. Alison Stagg from the Raleigh Foundation are very generous uh, financial supporters of our program and we are deeply grateful. Thank you very much for that. Welcome also to our school council members because without the leadership of school council, uh, Gawara simply wouldn't uh, exist and couldn't thrive. So again, members of our school council who are present, if you just stand for a moment please, once again so people can see who you are. Uh, thank you very much for your ongoing support for Gawara. Well, healing is our theme, and I want to mention that briefly from my point of view as head of school. Healing the land, most certainly. We're in a time when, at last, environmental sustainability has come to be recognised as important. And we've seen today that Aboriginal people have been practising that art for centuries, indeed for thousands of years. Sometimes in the past, white people have seen the creation mandate in the Bible as a justification and an excuse for exploiting the country. We now understand better that we are stewards of country and there's a lot to learn, I think, from the history of Aboriginal engagement with the land. And we white people need to pay good attention to that. There's also the healing issue to do with reconciliation as we endeavour to right the historic wrongs suffered by Indigenous people in Australia. That's actually why Gawara exists. Fifteen years ago, the decision was made that we would do something in our area to try to advance Aboriginal education. It was a Christian social justice initiative to try to do with the scandal of Aboriginal edu education in Australia, the scandal being the very poor outcomes of Aboriginal people. And so we're thrilled with what's happened through Gawara. We're thrilled that so many people have come through the school and graduated splendidly. We're delighted that one of our Gawara graduates has just returned from Oxford University with a master's degree. We're delighted that one has graduated from Sydney University with a combined arts law degree. We're thrilled that one is in second year medicine at the moment. We're delighted that another is in the second year of her PhD. These are Aboriginal students who have come through our program. And although we don't claim that university is the only worthwhile pathway, it is a worthwhile pathway and we're just delighted that those students have flourished in that way. And so we look for more of that as our students come through the program. We began the year with 60 Aboriginal students between kindergarten and year 12. 33 in Gawara and 27 in the high school. We employ 10 Aboriginal staff, which is very important for 
mentoring and for authenticity. We couldn't do these things without the wonderful support of our foundation and our donors. So what we're looking for is flourishing. We're not looking for a one day a year celebration, significant and important though that be. We're looking for every day of the year being a great day for our Aboriginal students. We're looking for them to be confident and secure in their Aboriginal identity, to not only learn about but through Aboriginal culture. We want them to be welcome here in the deep and rich meaning of the word welcome. We want them to thrive. We want them to become full members of Australian society who will exercise leadership amongst Aboriginal people and people of other ethnicities. We're seeing that as splendid students come through our school. We're seeing that as our wonderful staff provide such leadership and thank you very much to all of our extended Gawara staff for what you do. And boys and girls of Gawara and our Aboriginal students in the high school, congratulations on what you do and well done today for these wonderful performances we have seen. They've been very impressive. You've mastered uh, song and dance and narration really well and I'm very proud of you. So it's lovely to be here, it's lovely to celebrate, but I say again, we are looking for every day being a great day for our Aboriginal students, and thank you to the many of you who are contributing to make it so. Thank you for being here today. As I'm sure all of you know, uh, this is our Dr Collier's last year as head of our school. Uh, he's been, he has uh, 10 years here at St Andrews Cathedral School and we're going to uh, miss you greatly, Dr John. 12 years, my apologies. <laughs> 12 years at our school and we'll miss you greatly and we hope that you come back and join our um, future NADOC assemblies as well. Thank you very much. Um, always tell these little side stories which I get into trouble for and this is not an AFL one so that's good. Um, I just saw a text backstage here a minute ago from our auntie Leanna Carr-Smith who is our Aboriginal elder in residence this year and she is watching this event um, live from Bathurst today and she just has two words for all, all of our little jargons, too deadly. Well done, guys. Keep it up. All right, the next part of our morning is our presentation of Muji Awards. So Muji is a term for friend or mate or comrade. And what is beautiful about our Gawara School is that we are, in fact, although we are a standalone school, we are a separately registered school with NESA, we are a school within a school. And this means our students have wonderful resources available to them, but more importantly, they are able to build relationships with students in the junior school and in the high school. And we are relational people, and so today we celebrate these uh, Muji Awards in, in a very fine honour. So I'd like to call out these students, when you hear your name, if you can come up to the front, please, and receive your certificate from um, uh, Mrs Williams. And these are students who have shown wonderful um, aspects of friendship between our Indigenous and non-Indigenous students at school. Layla Lisa for embracing her friendships in the junior school. <laughs> Layla, come on up. Uh, not being rude, but I might ask if you just hold off on the applause till the end because we have a number of certificates and uh, our morning tea will turn into lunch. <laughs> Dylan Pitts for his efforts in strengthening his knowledge in Indigenous studies and building harmonious relationships. Dylan, well done. Uh, Isabel MacDonald for her efforts in strengthening her knowledge in Indigenous studies and building harmonious relationship. Isabel. Bakara Rossiter for engaging with other, others in her buddy classes. Bakara. 
Kai Fan for warmly welcoming others into the class. Beautiful Kai, well done. Alexandra Hing for being a kind and supportive friend to others. Samara Lyons for reaching out to others in friendship. Harley Goodman for being inclusive and caring towards others at St Andrew's Cathedral Gawara School. Isabella Greenhow for being an approachable and kind friend to her peers in Gawara. Kalara Silva for showing kindness and consideration towards others. Tanil Edbrook for being a kind friend to all. Charlotte Sims for strengthening her knowledge of First Nations perspectives and seeking to develop a deeper understanding of reconciliation. Wow, well done Charlotte, love that. Sophie Yanati for strengthening her knowledge of First Nations perspectives and building harmonious relationships with her three V peers. That's our K to three group. We might um, take a photo if we can just of that and then we'll get those boys and girls to sit down as we continue to year four and year six. Let's give them a round of applause, everyone. And you may go back and sit down. Well done, boys and girls. So these are our year four to six Muji Award winners. Winda Mambula for engaging with others in buddy class. Charlotte Hodgson for her demonstration of empathy towards First Nations people and culture in her research project. Ameline Coveney for strengthening her knowledge of First Nations perspectives and offering friendship to Gawara students. Annie Bray for embracing her friendships in the junior school. Costa Constantouris for making connections with First Nations culture and seriously considering his place in healing our country. This is beautiful, Costa. Claire Buggy for always showing kindness and offering support to Gawara students. Ashley Lee for, caring, for being caring and compassionate towards her Gawara friends. Oscar Sanfilippo for his caring and thoughtful nature when looking at Australia's shared history. That's beautiful comments here. Hannah Alhusian for her kindness and gentle nature in developing support and friendships to Year 5 Gawara students. Balan Mambula for being a good friend to all. Lucy Friedman for strengthening her knowledge of Indigenous studies and building harmonious relationships across Year 6. Well done, Lucy. Emon Lynch for offering support, guidance and friendship to Gawara students. Chelsea Chow for strengthening her knowledge of First Nations perspectives and seeking a deeper understanding of reconciliation. Emilija Fam Vasilinovic, generously giving up her time to read with Gawara students. How good is that? It's so good. Cyrus Davuti, always trying his hardest to push himself and others. And Joshua Ralph for always putting his best self forward. Uh, please congratulate our Muji Award winners here today. I just want to also... I've just displaced our MC for a moment to make a special announcement to you all. This morning, 
At a breakfast meeting, we announced our new team of student leaders. And I'm delighted to say to you that we've just announced our new school captain to take office from the first day of next term. And that young man is actually Aboriginal. He has not been selected because he is Aboriginal. That is essentially coincidental. But it seems to me very significant in the history of Sachs and in the history of our nation that a school like Sachs is appointing its first Aboriginal school captain. And I'd like to think it's a window into our future as a nation where in this case our Aboriginal student will have authority over all of his Anglo-Saxon peers and people of other ethnicities. It's a good thing. He is there, I say again, not because he is Aboriginal, but because of merit. That's independent of, an, of ethnicity. So I think uh, it's nice about to announce that first to our Gawara students and parents, and I think we should get the Archbishop and the Chairman of our Foundation, uh, Mr Peter Warren, up onto the stage so that they can personally congratulate Josh Ralph, who I'll call forward at the moment. You'll note that it's true that Josh has a significant relationship with a member of staff, uh, two of them in fact. Uh, that's also irrelevant, in some ways a hazard. Uh, we'll overcome that. And it's dawned on Josh in a, about the last hour and a half, he has quite a lot to do in the next year. So thank you for uh, giving us a bit of appropriate theatre uh, for this special announcement. Oh, Karen, <laughs> twice again. Uh, yes, we had no idea about that until this morning ourselves. No, not going to be good. I do know that he's... Um, <coughs> his grandparents would be very happy today and he never met them. Sadly, too many Aboriginal people died too early. But I know that my dad would be looking down. Pretty happy today. Anyway, congratulations, mate. Well done, buddy. Okay, now our next um, item, we're very fortunate to have a lovely young lady join us today called Makesha. Uh, Makesha is a 19 year old um, Durrambal Tongan woman born and raised in Sydney. Uh, she has uh, quite a significant um, history of music already, which is fantastic. And I believe Makesha is also a student, um, ex student from International Grammar School in Ultimo. So, uh, Makesha is a strong social justice advocate, singer-songwriter, and is completing a Bachelor of Fine Arts at the moment from the University of New York. So, Makesha, I'd like to welcome you to our stage, please. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Makesha. I, before we start and get a, into our Q&A with our students, I would just like to acknowledge country that we are here on Gadigal country this morning. So thank you for having me. What First Nations do you belong to? So my First Nations group, or my mob, as I like to say, is Drumble Country up in central Queensland. Um, my mum, who's with me here today, was born in Redcliffe, but her family and our mob is from Rockhampton in central Queensland. What is your totem? My totem is a small, little, very cute animal called the gecko. And they're like little white lizards and they make a clicking noise with their mouth. What's your favourite place in Australia? My favourite place, there's two of them. One of them is Sydney, because I was Sydney born and raised, so I'm a Sydney girl, I'm a city girl. Redfern area, the city in South Sydney is where I call home, but my second favourite place, or the place that comes very close to that, is Rockhampton, where my mum is from. It's got beautiful beaches, beautiful islands. Um, yeah, so that's my second favourite place. Do you have a favourite bush tucker? I do not have a fav favourite bush tucker, but I have tried crocodile, I've eaten kangaroo, I've tried goanna. Sorry if anyone's totem in the, in the room is any of those animals. <laughs> um, but my favourite um, curry or Murray snack is Devon and hot chips on a sandwich. What made you want to be a musician? I, I like to say that I came out of came into the world, came out of the womb singing, um, but I've always had a really musical family. We've always um, listened to music. Every family barbecue we have, there's someone with a guitar um, singing some songs. My dad had a um, Koori radio hip hop show, so I grew up being in the radio studio with him and I just have always been surrounded by lots of music. What path did you take to get into this career? I remember being in primary school, just like you guys, in my music class and just loving singing the songs, um, playing the xylophones, playing the drums. Um, and I think that is where my music, my love for music really was able to grow. And then now coming out of high school, I'm now able to do music at university too. What is your advice to young people about getting into the music industry? I guess if your heart is in music and if your dream is to be a musician, a piano player, a singer, a songwriter, whatever it may be, um, I just say follow your heart, do what you love, have fun, and don't take anything too seriously. What do you feel is the most important thing about this year's NAIDOC Week theme, Healing Country? I think Heal Country has a lot of important um, aspects to it. I think the first of that is actually taking care of our planet, making sure that we're reducing what we use, we're recycling, um, and we're picking up after ourselves and taking care of this beautiful city, this beautiful country, and this beautiful planet that we live on. And the second part of that that is really important is respecting and valuing and learning about First Nations ways of caring for country and the way that Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people have cared for this country for tens of thousands of years. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now I'm going to make my way to the piano and I'm actually going to be performing a song for you guys today. It is called Hill Country, a little bit similar to the NADOC theme this year. And it's basically about um, kind of what we were just speaking about, caring for our country, respecting the place that quite literally houses us and cares for us and has um, taken care of us for tens of thousands of years since people have been here on this beautiful country. So I hope you enjoy. born from the earth and we return to it at the end of this life it welcomes us home so who are we to exploit all 
of its resources A way to decide her destiny Think of all the generations that are yet to come All the life and all the light that hasn't seen the sun We have an opportunity to do better I'ma take this opportunity to do better Makesha, thank you so much for that beautiful performance and your presence today. That's so good. Um, Makesha is actually going to stay around with us for a little while and enjoy morning tea, but also perform that in our secondary NAVOC assembly happening a little bit later. So thank you very much again. Well done. Well, boys and girls, and and mums and dads and all of our visitors today. That actually concludes our NAIDOC assembly for this morning. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming today, the donors, the special guests, um, the Archbishop of Sydney and Dr Collier and, and Ray Jarrett, our Chairman of um, School Council. Um, all of our Gawara families who are present, thank you. We're so, it is such a, an honour and a privilege to be able to teach your children and it's just something beautiful to be part of a school that embraces culture that um, is, is not going to die out. And I'm, I'm really proud to be part of that team that's doing that. It is a team effort here. No one person is bigger than anyone else. And that's something that I, I, I love. Um, I just want to say uh, for our parents joining us for morning tea, it will be next door in the chapter house and we also be handing out some NAIDOC certificates during that as well, so our students will be receiving that and we'd love you to come back and, and share morning tea uh, with us there. Alright, we're going to finish off with the recession, so can I have our student leaders again please come out to the front, oh there you go. So I'll talk about how good our team is, it's already. So thank you very much everyone for joining us. We look forward to seeing you at morning tea. 
and have a great NAIDOC week in the July school holidays. Thank you. And parents, parents, as the flags or as the procession pass you by, you may leave your aisle and come and join us next door in the um, chapter house. Thank you.